Perfect. Thank you, Tay, and uh, good morning to everyone. Um, for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Russ Lassard. I'm the sales manager with the West Seattle office, and I hope everyone is staying safe and at the same time uh, being productive out there in their, in their real estate business. Today, we're going to talk about how we're staying connected or getting belly to belly with our clients and sphere of influence during these times. Um, we'll also hear from a couple of our, our own agents, uh, one Andrea Brittingham from the Brewing office, and as well as Lisa Alley from the West Seattle office on how they're able to stay belly to belly during these times. Uh, when Andrea and Lisa are finished um, with their talk, uh, I encourage everyone to speak freely. You know, consider this a roundtable discussion. You can talk about what you're doing to stay belly to belly with your, your clients in, in sphere of influence or potentially new clients. And if you have any, any challenges, speak out, ask, ask questions about the challenges you are having. And we can, as a group, collectively uh, discuss how to overcome some of these challenges we're having during these times. Um, I, during, uh, over the last week, I've been able to talk to a few of the top agents it's not me <laughs> in regards to um, what they're doing for, for their business. Um, if you haven't already um, listened to Craig Roberts speak, he does have a video out on getting belly to belly with, with clients. Um, that is on Tay's YouTube website. So just Google Tay Kroll YouTube and look for the video from Craig Roberts on getting belly to belly. That was several months back. So that was before this whole COVID-19 and quarantine. And I encourage everyone to go back and watch that and then see how, what you can do to implement some of that stuff to your business today. And as well as we're gonna hear from agents and listen to what they're doing right now during these times to stay engaged with their clients. Uh, one thing that Craig Roberts mentioned that he does is he passes out 10 business cards a day. That, that's his goal every day. You know, what can we do during these times? Can we send out 10 comments on social medias or send out 10 direct messages instead of handing out business cards? You know, think of ways to stay connected with, with your sphere of influence and potential clients. Another agent I spoke with, um, Stuart Stedman, uh, due to a scheduling conflict, he was unable to come on today and speak. But one thing he's doing is he's showing up for business every day. He's putting on a coat and tie so his clients know he's out there and he's available, which I think is great. He's suited up as if he's out there working every day. And in fact, he is out there working every day. So that's one thing to consider as well when you're posting on social media. Think about your appearance. You know, are you letting people know you are available? You are out there working. They're going to comment and get back to you and ask you questions. Um, one thing Stuart does as well, he's doing a little bit more as far as social media posting. You know, he's still staying connected by phone. He's still doing his monthly mailings. You know, he's showing and selling safely, you know, out there with, with the guidelines. So those are some things to consider a, as well. So with the agents, we have Andrea Brittingham. I'm going to have her speak now. Andrea is from our Beering office. She's just started her real estate career this year. And she's only been with Berkshire Hathaway Bearing Office for several weeks. So as she came into real estate, this is the norm for her. Her previously she was in the photography business and she's used it which was home based and she's using some of those skills, being a home based business, and using it for her real estate today to stay connected. Um, Andrea, are you there? Yep. Tell us what you're doing in your business to stay connected with clients in your sphere of influence. So, um, like you were saying, I used to have a uh, photography business, but I specialized in high school seniors. So, obviously, social media is a huge deal to high school people. <laughs> so, um, I've got a decent amount of experience with Instagram specifically and Facebook, but um, I have been focusing a little bit more on Instagram and I have quite a few things that I do. Um, 
So one thing I do is I use a scheduling platform to schedule all of my posts out. I use Planoly. I know there's been other ones mentioned, but to me, Planoly is the best one. You do have to pay, I think, $9.99 a month to use it, but to me, it's well worth it. Um, it tells you everything. Um, like you get to plan out your posts and see how they look, but you can auto schedule also to Facebook at the same time that you Instagram. So it'll go up to both, but then it also gives you analytics. So it'll tell you what posts of yours are performing the best and um, which ones are the worst. It also gives you a week by week play by play on how many likes you're getting, how many followers you're getting. So if you're interested in seeing your growth, um, to me, it's really invaluable because I get to do everything at the same time. And then keep track of maybe what posts are kind of bombing and what posts are doing really well, which is really useful from a marketing perspective because you want to know what is doing well specifically and scrolling through your Instagram to see how many likes you get is going to take you a lot more time than just for it to show you what is working well. Um, so when a post does go up live, um, I do schedule it based on what is a good performance time and it does tell me good performance times there's three different times it tells you that based off of your interaction you get the most interaction so i schedule based off of those times but then it also notifies me when it goes live oh my. So even if i'm what's that Oops, I'm gonna have a question. Okay. Okay. go ahead keep going i think that's <laughs> what I'm sorry about that um so even if I'm out and about doing something, I'm still going to get a notification when it goes up. And usually I just kind of stop what I'm doing and I interact because the way that the Instagram algorithms are working right now, and they change all the time, but right now you need to have interaction within your first 10 minutes of posting. So if you put up a, a picture on Instagram, and you're not getting likes and you're not getting comments and you are not interacting, then it only shows it to 10% of your followers. So you want to make sure when a post goes up, I have a parrot cat. <laughs> um, you wanna make sure when your post goes up that you are actually interacting. And that can be by means of commenting back on the people that have commented to you, or going onto the hashtags that you used and following those people or commenting on their things. Um, and I'm a huge, huge proponent of, this is kind of the quality over quantity kind of thing. Um, relate to people when you comment on their stuff. Don't just like, like a bunch of their pictures and go like, cute, like uh, whatever their photo is, like tell an actual story. like. For example, um, I liked someone's post that they posted that they went out to La Push Beach and it was a picture of La Push and they had something about Twilight on there. And I commented and said a funny story of like when I was 19, um, a friend and I drove out to La Push and did like a Twilight pilgrimage. And then it kind of, it, it's like a funny story um, and I talked about how it was kind of funny that they had a poster cut out of Edward Cullen and they put it in a truck to look like he was driving. <laughs> so people, they relate to that. And then it started a conversation. So that person ended up commenting back and then we kind of had like a little thread going. So I don't just like mass comment on things. I like make sure that I actually have something to say if I'm gonna say something. Um, the other thing too is if someone sends me a DM to my Instagram, which is a direct message, <laughs> um, sometimes I do respond via text if I can, but in Instagram DM, you can respond with a video. So sometimes I'll just take the time to respond back with a video and just say like, hey, thanks so much for contacting me. Um, and then answer their question or whatever. And then I usually just type it out afterwards because those videos do expire. Um, so it kind of gives them a lot more of a personal interaction with me when I'm responding with a video versus just typing back. Like 
for example, when I had my photography business, a lot of times people would send me a message just saying like, what are your prices? And I would respond back with a video of myself, you know, thanking them for contacting me and um, complimenting them or something like that. And then I'd eventually send my prices, but I didn't want to lead with just the sale you want to lead with your personality because they get a lot more attracted to you. Um, let's see. I do do a lot of um, stories on Instagram and I try to story almost every single day and I try to post almost every single day um, with, sorry, my cat's screaming. <laughs> Um, with Instagram, it's turned where your feed is not as interactive as stories. So if you're doing stories throughout the day of what you're doing or out and about, whatever is going on, or if you just want to talk about something in the real estate world, people are a lot more apt to respond to you because they like what you're saying. And then that just starts its own dialogue instead of just relying on your feed. Because like I said, with the feed, it's only potentially showing 10% of your followers. So you want to be doing multiple different things across the board um, to have people interested in you. Um, and like I was saying about relatability, I'm huge on relatability and my social media is not just business related because people tune out when it's just about business. Um, I kind of do a trick where I consistently post five or six different themes. So you kind of know what you're getting when you follow me consistently. And it kind of helps too, so that you're not oversharing your personal life so much. Um, then, you know, like for example, I'll share real estate is like one topic, obviously. And then another topic will be maybe gardening and another topic will be hiking in the Pacific Northwest. And another topic maybe is, uh, interior design. And then maybe your last topic is like your pets or something like that. So, um, it kind of keeps a consistent theme and then, um, is, more like relatable because you're sharing multiple aspects of you and not solely just business. Um, so I think I'm looking at my notes that I have on the other screen. Um, I think that's pretty much like the gist on what I have. Um, yeah, does anyone have any questions? I could go on and on, but hopefully that's just the basics. <laughs> One thing I remember during our conversation, Andrea, is you mentioned you follow people in your in your local area. Yeah, so I follow, um, instead of just following mass people everywhere, you really wanna make sure that you're actually following people from here. And you can't 100% control that, but the best way that I do it is I, follow one of my friends in my close circle, and then I will follow their followers or people that they follow because you're at least hopefully getting people that are in this area that are, um, you're going to be following and not just a bunch of weird Instagram people out in Instagram land. <laughs> Another good way to do that too is just follow people that have liked their image. So it's usually their friends that are liking their images. No, great. Good stuff. Um, for everyone listening, one of the, the aha moments for me, just with what Andrea does, is with her um, posts, she uses a uh, family. So it's scheduled posts at a, at a certain time. And what I really like is Andrea takes the time, she basically sets an appointment with her posting. So she'll post something and she'll make sure she's free for the next 30 minutes or an hour. So she's commenting on other people's comments. She's responding back and kind of that's how she's getting belly to belly with people. She's just setting time aside. When they comment on her, she's responding back. And that's yeah. one way to get belly to belly and interact with potential clients out there. The other so, thing that's good too about using those planning, planning uh, apps and things like that is that 
you're, you can sit down for a week and schedule everything out for a week or, or sit down for an hour and then schedule everything out for a week or two weeks. So you're not coming up with things to post on the fly. You're coming up with good content in one sitting, scheduling it out for, you know, a week or two weeks, and then it'll notify you when it goes up. Because I know in the past when I was just trying to come up with like, oh, I need to post right now because I haven't posted in a couple of days. Then you end up posting something that you kind of regret posting or doesn't really make sense because you feel like you have to. It's better, like I said, quality over quantity to just sit down and do it for the week. And then you have things that people are actually hopefully going to be interested in. Yeah. No, great. So for, for everyone, what I recommend is if you don't use a system like Planoly, when you do post something, plan ahead, make an appointment with that post and set a minimum of 30 minutes aside so you can engage with those who are liking or commenting on your post. No, really great. Thank you so much, Andrea. Any questions for Andrea? I just have one small thing to add. I, mm -hmm. and we talked about this at one point. I think a lot of people forget that social media is social. So the way that the algorithms act is that you also have to be social and you don't want to use social media as self-serving. It's not just there for you, it's to be social. So you need to make sure that you are engaging and interacting yourself or it's not going to do anything for you. Yes, absolutely. Any questions? Looks like Bruce, Bruce is trying to say something, but you need to unmute yourself, Bruce. Oh, there you go. Okay, now I forgot the question. Um, on on Facebook, Facebook uh, business versus personal. Um, do you post or do you do that? And if so, do you post most of what you're talking about on business? Yeah. And let it flood. How, how do you let it flood over to the personal page? Because that's like where most of my contacts are and where the SOI is and where I'm likely to get business. Yeah, so I, the Planoly, uh, it's an app, but you can also use it on your computer. It'll auto post to both Instagram and Facebook. And I believe you can auto post it to your personal. You just have to set it up like that. But I think it only is gonna let you do uh, your personal or your real estate page. So a lot of times I, have it auto posting to my real estate page. And then I will just share it to my personal page if it's something that I really wanna to share to everyone. But I don't consistently only share real estate stuff all the time, because I think people kind of tune you out if all yeah. you're posting is real estate. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, hopefully that answered that. Okay. And it's Planoly, like P-L-A-N? Yeah. Okay. O L Y. Okay. Great. If there's no uh, further questions at the moment, and we will um, have discussion at the end after we hear from Lisa Alley as well. So if you have any questions or comments, it'll be open floor. But now I'd like to introduce uh, Lisa Alley. Uh, Lisa Alley is from our West Sale office. Uh, Lisa was our 2019 Rookie of the Year. So she's out there, she's working hard, drumming up business. And uh, Lisa, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you, thanks for, for having me. Andrea, I have to say, um, that was very insightful. I've got no social media game at all. I didn't even know what half of that was that you were talking about. So I, I have a lot to learn and um, it's super impressive to see all that you're doing. So, um, I don't really have that much to add, but Russ wrote me into this, so, <laughs> so um, it's nice to see everybody. Um, and and really, I just you know again, what I'm going to say is so different than what Andrea is going to say. I think all of us are just doing our best during this time to be belly to belly, and what that looks like now is so different than what it looked like before this COVID nineteen. 
and then what it's going to look like in a couple of weeks, you know, we just don't know. So for me, um, you know, I've been trying to take care of the senior pals in my life, including my 86 year old mom. So for me, I'm doing a lot of essential trips to the stores. Uh, they have me running their errands and all that good stuff. So I'm really just trying to make the most of that in-person time, whether it's at uh, the grocery store or Costco, uh, six feet apart with a mask on, you know, so it's all of a sudden this belly to belly, this communication is different. I mean, I've got to connect with somebody with a mask on. And so I try to make jokes, you know, that I'm smiling underneath my mask. Um, at the grocery store, I'm, I'm holding, you know, Clorox wipes and I'm talking to people about how important it is to keep these homes, these listings and buyers safe and for everybody. And so what's interesting is that it becomes a conversation for me in the last couple of weeks um, about like, oh, real estate. Oh, what's the market like? Oh, what's happening with the bridge closure? And so for me, it's been interesting to take the time to talk to anybody who will talk to me because I'm so chatty. So who am I going to talk to? So when I'm going through the grocery store, um, I, I mean, I'm literally, I was at Target last week at 6.45 in the morning, just so I could be the first person in line to maybe buy some Clorox wipes. And I did because that's my mission to buy them, to share them with clients, colleagues, um, anybody who needs them. So it's been a little bit of a mission this past month or so to be belly to belly by using these essential trips because otherwise the stay home, stay healthy order, you know, I'm, I have to follow that. So, so, uh, so I, I told the store manager the other day, I said, I promise you, I'm not hoarding. I'm giving all these things to people who need them to keep us all safe. And he said, okay, okay. <laughs> but it's only one for customers. So you have to go uh, more often than once. Um, but so what I've done, uh, I've, I've spent the time to reach out to my clients, trying to make sure they're okay. Um, this one client that I sold the home to in December, this is kind of a neat story. Um, last week I checked on her and she's in the Renton Highlands and she said they were doing fine. She was thrilled that they weren't living in the apartment downtown Seattle during all of this. Um, but she said she couldn't find any Clorox wipes anywhere. And, uh, and again, back to my whole mission of stocking up on some of this stuff, I've dropped off more toilet paper on porches, waved to clients through their windows, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, but for her, she couldn't find these wipes. So, so I said, you know what, I'm going to pop by tomorrow. And so this was last Thursday. And I put a big canister, three canisters of those wipes and a bunch of stickers and puzzles for the kiddos and flowers for the mom. And I brought it to the front porch and um, got to wave at them and see them. And it was just a really nice way to connect. Um, again, like Andrea said, it's not always real estate related. We just wanna take care of each other or relate, connect. Um, so for me, I'm just trying to make sure I do my part during this time, because it is challenging. Um, but then when I got to the door, I know some of you guys saw this on Facebook, but I thought this was just to support the people and, you know, to during this time. And little Raya made this for me. And it says, Lisa, thanks for thinking of us, the Holloways. And this made my day. So I had to show and tell. <laughs> so I guess for me, um, I'm just trying to find ways to use these essential visits uh, to the stores. Um, a lot of conversations happen when I'm standing six feet apart with a cart in front of me at Costco. Um, it's just random. If there's one thing that's consistent about this business is how random it is uh, for me. Um, I miss open houses. I miss not knowing how am I going to meet these people who are ready to buy and sell a home, you know? And so it is a strange time. Um, so when I walk around my neighborhood, um, I use that as another opportunity because I can tell you every house that is sold, what it's sold for, when it's sold, if it's pending, if it's active, all that jazz. So when I'm walking around the neighborhood with my mask on, um, I engage with the, the people who are outside in the nice weather. So for me, that's been my belly to belly. Um, I'm looking over at my notes here, uh, social media. I've got like no, I'm like, Andrea, I'm so impressed. I, I have a lot to learn about Instagram and all that stuff. Um, but I think, I think for me, I'm just trying to take care of the client's that I have and try to find new ways to connect with them to maybe get a referral. Maybe somebody will recommend me in the 
future. So I have a question for you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. So when you're at places like the grocery store, Target or Costco's, how do you engage in conversation with people around you? Um, I, I, I guess I'm just so darn chatty. I, I comment on their hat, their shoes, their clothes. I'll comment on anything, but I'm really genuine. I'm not really, I'm not, I'm just, I think I'm just like so darn chatty that I just feel this need and we don't have the interaction with our, each other and uh, we just don't get to see people. And I get so excited when I see somebody <laughs> and I just want to talk to them, but um, you know, sometimes it's not well received. Um, you know, we can't be in people's personal space. Um, so I have to be mindful of that, but it doesn't mean we can't be good humored. And so, um, I'm, I'm usually able to get people to talk, but I always keep my business cards in my pocket and two in my wallet at all times. So I'm always handing out my card. Always. Mm -hmm. I, I joke and say, I'm not trying to buy and sell you a house, you know, right now. But someday. <laughs> so you're, you're definitely always prepared. <laughs> and I know that about you. But I like the thing about Stuart Stedman. Uh, is that how you say his name, Stuart? Yes. I was in the grocery store doing mom's uh, visits to the grocery, you know, to get her stuff uh, the other day in QSC on First Avenue in Burien. And Stuart was on my cart. He, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, was he on my cart? Or was yeah. he the divider, the grocery yeah. store Norm divider? Normandy Park, yeah. Okay, okay, so that one. Uh, somebody else from Windermere had the divider, their name on the divider. It was a Windermere guy. But Stuart was on my shopping cart. And I thought, how cool is that? That he's finding a way to reach out to people. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, it's any chance you can to talk to people. Um, uh, you know, I have to be prepared also. If I'm gonna tell people I'm gonna bring supplies to them because I wanna keep them safe, I better have some supplies. So I kinda have, uh, if anybody needs anything, uh, sanitizer, hand wipes, toilet paper, I'll bring it to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is great. Um, it is a strange time. Um, you know, even just people in our building are, um, I, I don't know. How, it's it's such a strange time. We all want to, um, there's still buyers and um, there's still a lot of things going on in the market. Um, I have a, a long way to go to, 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 to use the tools that we have. And so that's why I appreciate uh, all the feedback. Andrea, um, honestly, I need to sit down. You need to school me. I, I, I don't know half of what you just said, <laughs> but I need to learn. <laughs> But, um, but I, I think right now we're just trying to keep get through this and get through it together and with a positive attitude, um, pretty much all we can do. But popping by and surprising people with care packages and things like that, that's been kind of my MO. Um, it feels good. It feels good to help. Um, and I don't want my clients to forget me. I just, I just Absolutely. don't. So. No, that, that is great. Yeah, one thing I want to add is, you know, between all, all um, with Stuart Stebbin dressing up for work every day, oh, yeah. he's putting on a, a coat and, and tie. And then you, Lisa, you're, you're, you're out there, you know, you're, you're at their grocery store, you're, you're at Target. One thing I'd recommend for all the agents, if you're out and about, dress for business. Mm -hmm. Okay, dress for business. One thing Scott Stevenson always says, you know, your number one sales tool outside of your smile is going to be your na name badge. So if you can see that right there, dress up, wear your name badge. You don't have to say anything about real estate, but I'm sure when you're in line at the grocery store at Target, someone's going to notice it and they might strike up a conversation with you about real estate by just dressing the part and wearing your badge. You know, thanks for reminding me about the, the name tag. Um, I, I do need to start wearing mine more because it does bring up conversations. Um, and, uh, and that's a good thing. Um, I do have one more story. I was on my little list, uh, uh, that I, that I forgot. And, you know, it's interesting. We meet people and we never know when we might be able to help them. Um, I'm under contract now with a client that I've been working with for, uh, 18 months now. And specifically, I met them when they came to my first listing, September 13th, 2018. And I'll never forget it because it took four months to sell that home. Um, and, but 
you know, it's funny when you meet somebody, you, you want to, you want to keep, um, somehow be relatable to them throughout their process, whatever that looks like. It might be start and stop. They, they may, um, but you don't want them to forget, uh, and always to know that they can come to you. And so here we are fast forward, you know, um, you know, I had the opportunity to sell their condo and now we're under contract for a home for them. So I couldn't be more grateful to keep in touch with somebody that I met in September, 2018, to be able to help them at this point. Uh, you know, so it's, it's just interesting. And then there's another lady, one of my senior pals that I was uh, on my list of people that I'm taking care of, uh, 78 year old Katrina. She came to that listing uh, in high, in uh, high point. Um, and she became my best buddy. She never missed any of my open houses. And uh, I don't think we miss a day that we don't talk. Um, I do all of her shopping for her. I take, I do anything she wants me, but it's, you know, she, she someday is going to sell her condo or she's going to tell her fans, friends and family. And I want her to, you know, I want to be that person that she knows she can trust and she can refer to other people. But it's interesting how these relationships, uh, some transactions seem to be um, can be quick and but then some take a very long time and in that process you meet the neighbors you meet friends and family so it's interesting how we nurture those relationships not knowing how it's going to go but for me I think uh, I'm in it for the long haul I just don't know what that looks like so I mean it's not always easy um, but I'm grateful for any opportunity and of course you know talking about real estate, like Andrea said, or posting, that was a good reminder, Andrea. Sometimes I only use social media to post a nice testimonial. And that's self-serving, as you just said, and I don't mean it to be that way at all. But then I'll post a picture of some bread that I made because I'm learning new things during the stay at home, uh, you know, order. So I think it is important. Relatable is probably the best word uh, that you said, because Do you get I, a lot of interaction on your bread posts. Yeah. See, that's the thing is a lot of times people will interact on that kind of stuff, but not necessarily your real estate stuff. Yeah. And so it's, it's still good to have that in there, but like, like you, you can, really yeah, yeah. It's funny because we all genuinely just, we are genuinely who we are. We are just genuinely trying to do our best for our, our clients and uh, family and everything else. Um, but at the same time, we, post those things to try and remind people that we are uh, working hard, we're trustworthy, we're, we're good agents, um, but we want to do so in a way that that works because like you said, I've seen some video or some postings that are real estate related that get no, no, no likes or anything uh, and, and, and it happens. But then yeah. you post something else, and and then you said another great thing is to not just like or but to actually comment, um, so that you can relate. Um, yeah, it's I think um, Russ and I talked about this quickly last night. I. I think that people need to remember too right now with social media that just because you're posting things and not getting as much interaction remember that people are online at all different times of day right now and not just when they're getting off work or going to bed like it used to be so if your interaction is a little bit weak right now just remember consistency is key and to just keep going through it um, the more consistent you are it'll benefit you in the long run because if you get discouraged that you're not getting as much interaction that's not going to do anything for you to just quit so um, just keep being consistent if you're not getting the interaction that you feel like you should be. Yeah, that's a good point. And then I also applaud people who use video. You know, I, I am so afraid of doing video. It is just not my wheelhouse. It's something I've got to get over, but it's, I, um, but I see success. I see people yesterday. I saw Titus did a really nice, uh, um, virtual, what do you call it? Virtual open house. Yeah, um, and he did a nice job, and it was really cool. He was nervous, he was authentic, he was genuine, and he was just trying to 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 keep moving forward during these times using a different uh, tool, and he did a good job. So it's nice to support each other also during this time. You know, make sure that we all, you know, we're we're cheerleaders for each other. We 
We want to make sure everybody is, stays positive. So. Yes, absolutely. Lisa, something you said earlier on, you mentioned about how real estate can be so random. <laughs> and I, I just wanted to, to comment on that because I know that that is, that's how this business can feel sometimes. It can feel really random. But I just want to remind you that uh, real estate's a lot like poker, right? At the end of the day, the ones that are really good at it always seem to find themselves in that position to be lucky, right? And, and so I think that part of your success is that you are, you, you're very intentional about the things that you do to connect with people. And it's those connections and the, the number of those and the sincerity of those that bring you the business. And so while it might feel random because maybe you get somebody when you're standing in line at Costco and that seems random, but I think if you really peel back the, the, uh, the onion a little bit, you see a core of a, a genuine, you know, a, a lead generation activity. And, and maybe that's just you and who you are and your personality when you're, when you're interacting with people in that way. But, you know, that idea of putting, you have to put yourself in front of the bus over and over again if you're going to get hit, right? You know, yeah, I really, you if you're sitting in the house, right, and, and doing nothing. So I think you're a lot more intentional than you realize. I just wanted to point that oh, out. Oh, thanks. Well, I appreciate you saying yeah. that. And, you know, it's interesting because each day without, um, I, I, I do try to find some way to connect with uh, a past client, somebody on SOI. Um, you know, I have 600 magnets here with the Mariner schedule that, that are not right. And uh, I didn't mail any of them out because I didn't think it was the right time because people are not at work, they're furloughed, they're working from home. So it wasn't the right time for me to take these 600 magnets and mail them out. Mm -hmm. So then I thought, well, I've got to find other ways to connect with people. So it is interesting and I appreciate you saying that because um, uh, Every day, I, I, I don't try. I do reach out to a handful of people. It might be a, one or two one day. It might be a couple the next day. But you're right. I don't let a day go by where I don't make some connection somehow, some way. It's random in the sense that I never know how that's going to look. Or Like, for example, you told a story about a year ago, and it kind of resonated with me. And it happened to me um a couple weeks ago so you said that you got a message on your inbox on facebook on messenger and you just don't you just don't check my facebook at that time you just and it turned out to be uh somebody who wanted i think some help buying a house okay um and it just resonated with me that you said that because there are times when all of us go oh i don't check messenger or we've all heard people say that over time and uh i got a message in messenger uh from somebody who I've known uh, forever, um, and she's been following my my real estate career. You know, somebody who you always reach out to on your SRI, anybody who you've ever uh, worked with or had a beer with or went golfing with or hiked with or anything like that. But um, her her message was, uh, my husband and I have a five month old, and we live in a one bedroom apartment. And I, I you know I see how successful you are. Are you still doing your real estate? I, we need your help buying a home. And um, of course, you know. Right away, I wanted. I responded, um, and now uh, we. In fact, I was at Costco doing a, a, one of those essential runs for the seniors, and I sat on the phone with her for about an hour in that parking lot uh, while the child napped uh, about two weeks ago, so that we could talk more at length about what how I could help them. And so it was, it was a great. Um, you know, you never know where your messages are going to come from. Um, nowadays, people don't always pick up the phone, so uh, you know you've got to look for a text or a or a message in Messenger. Or, and um, but I'm grateful for for keeping an eye on all these things. Even though Andrea, I'm not the social, like I'm not social media queen. Uh, I, I, I've got to make sure that I stay on top of uh, somebody who sends me a message um, because she very well could have thought, oh, she doesn't do real estate anymore. And, uh, and she might have moved on to somebody else. So that's something else that we talked about too, is knowing who your audience is when you're contacting them. Like if it's a millennial to text them or um, send them a Facebook message or something, because that's just how we respond better. But if it's someone who's um, like baby boomer age or something like that to just call them because that's something that they'll resonate with in your like method of contacting people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And I know we got some newer agents on here and some veteran agents. I want to hear from uh, other agents, mm -hmm. you know, what, what are your thoughts? How are you getting belly to belly? What challenges are you having? 
and what can we come up with to help you overcome those challenges? Um, anyone willing to share or ask a question? Well, one thing that I'm having trouble with is I keep signing up for different webinars to try to use my time to a good advantage. Mm -hmm. And then right when I sign up for it, and this isn't just with our company, it'll come up a second page will give me the link to the website that may be a day or two later. And then come the day and the time, it's like, oh crap, you know, what was that? So I'm finding I have to go back through my email to search. I'm now keeping notes when I sign up for a webinar of who it's put on by. So I can search my email to find the link or re-sign up again that morning. It's crazy. There's got to be a better way. Yeah. A couple things you can do. You can add it to your calendar. So it'll be on your calendar. And you can also flag the email. I know with the Outlook, if you flag it, it'll come up to the top of your emails. That's true. Okay, good idea. I didn't think of that. Yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. I just assumed they'd all be like, hey, and send me something the day of. <laughs> no, I have the same problems too, Barb. I have to go <laughs> back and look sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I try to I try to make sure everybody's reminded as best as best we can because I know you get busy, right? And then you're like, oh no, there was that thing that I wanted yeah. to do. And while we're recording this one today, it's very easy to forget to record them, and, and so they don't necessarily always get out to you. Who I'm else? I to record some of the ones that I've watched, but I I don't know that I can do that. Yeah, because there was just so much I couldn't write fast enough. Who else is having good like? conversation meaningful stuff i feel like conversations right now are like more meaningful when you're having them does anybody else feel that way like like there's a heightened sense of kind of connection with people as you're having conversations right now while we're doing this all together because we're all experiencing something together like you, you you know that they they talk about uh you know relationships and building relationships and how if you can uh like on a first date if you can do something where you're actually physically doing something and and, and completing an objective, right? Building something or, you know, whatever, that you build this kind of heightened sense of connection. Um, and, and it kind of seems like we have that opportunity right now, building that, that kind of connection with people. Are, are, is anybody experiencing that when they're talking to people? Yes. Um, I think that people have more time to have like an actual conversation than before. People were very busy with their lives and didn't want to um, have a random conversation. And now I think people with a little slowdown and more time are willing to just talk. Mm -hmm. Some people don't have anyone to talk to, so they're happy to have a conversation about whatever at this point. Um, also, one thing I was thinking is if you have a garden or you've been um, planting any kind of produce and you have too much of it, I think a good thing to be able to kind of post and maybe incorporate real estate into a picture or a video and just say um, something about still selling real estate or still working, but I have been tending to my garden and I have too many potatoes. Does anybody need potatoes? I could happily drop you off whatever kind of produce that you might be growing. I know people have like too many zucchinis. Maybe you make zucchini bread and see if anybody needs some of that. Maybe you attach a business card to it. Um, I've actually been doing pretty much exactly that because I yeah. like gardening and I have a big veggie garden and I've been doing little like stories or I've even done a video of like how to plant seeds in the yeah. veggie garden. And I got a ton of interaction on that one. And I even posted it on a Pacific Northwest Gardeners page on Facebook and got like a hundred likes and comments off of it. There you and go. then my neighbor, um, I started sharing like extra seeds and stuff with her. So I bought onion sets and had extra and I ended up messaging her yesterday and just saying like, do you want onion sets? And then That's she great. just came and got them. So for me, I don't have a garden yet, but I have a ton of baby clothes. So anyone that I see on Facebook that's pregnant or just had a baby, I'll just message them privately and say like, hey, do you need some hand-me-downs? I have tons of stuff I could drop off to you. Or maybe even not clothes. Maybe if you notice someone that's having a baby, you say like, hey, do you need a meal? And you could drop them off like a Trader Joe's lasagna or something very easy that they don't have to cook. That's awesome. Talk about a huge, huge long-term impact, right? Right. I mean, really, yeah. Simple stuff, big, big impact. Yeah. Papa Murphy's pizza, those are easy. 
That's all Anything I got. Else with <laughs> challenges. Or what are they doing to stay belly to belly? What'd you say? Yeah, you cut out rest. Oh, sorry. Must be bad internet. You know, what else is anyone doing out there? You know, even if it's small, what are you, what are you doing that you can suggest to the group that may help them just to stay belly to belly? Hi guys. I just wanted to um, say that I'm, I'm headed out to work right now. Um, I work for Bartels and so um, I'm headed out there right now, but I've been connecting with people every day, of course. Um, but I made a special friend from Ocean Shores who took my card and uh, he, we're gonna connect as far as trying to get something going out there. So um, it's all in talking to people, just talking to them and relating. Mm -hmm. That's do, you, all. do you feel like people are talking more? Because a lot of people are staying at home with quarantine. And I've noticed when I'm at the grocery store, people are more willing to talk, especially when you're, you're, you're in line, just to pass right. the time and just have that social connection. So definitely exactly. if you're out there at the We're, stores, anyone, start with a, a smile. You know, we look at someone's smile, be friendly and strike up a conversation. People want to talk because they're at home so much. They're isolated. Yeah, no, you're right. I was right. yesterday. I was in Burien at a, um, a local uh, a pizza place, an Italian place, picking up dinner for the family. And there was a guy behind me. He came in. I did exactly that. Turn around. Just we were waiting for the guy at the the counter, and uh, you know, smiled, whatever, struck up a conversation. And before you know it, he's telling me about he how he's a painter in the area, and uh, and then he asked what I did, and I told him, and then. He actually wanted to know my name, right? It's really abnormal for people to actually be like, what's your name? And, you know, whatever. But, I mean, it is. It's, it's interesting because the, 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 the dynamic has changed. The conversations are different. The opportunities are different. I was going to say, even, like, with social media, um, when I said I comment, like, genuinely on people's stuff, I commented on this gal's post um, that I found in the Pacific Northwest hashtag about nettles, and she – Took the time, I don't know if you can see it. No? Okay. Well, she took the time to type out like an entire phone's worth message of how to use nettles. Cause I just said like, oh, I've always been curious. I've got so many behind my fence on how people use that. And she typed a huge message to me personally, just on like how to use them. Nice. So I think people are definitely have the time in their hands to talk more. Yeah. I love this topic of how do you get belly to belly and I, I want to throw a couple of ideas since we're opening kind of discussion here. Diana um, or Diane, <laughs> you, your name, uh, 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 I, know. Uh, I know, right? It's great. Uh, <laughs> changed it. He's yelling. Nice. Uh, you know, Diane's idea, uh, we've talked about this several times about like po posting stuff on Facebook and letting people know what you need, right? And just this idea of asking for help, right? Hey, I've got a goal this week, right? I got a goal this week that I want to talk to 10 people about what's going on in the interest with the interest rates. If you're curious what's going on with interest rates, whether you're going to buy or not, doesn't matter. I'd love to tell you because my goal this week is to talk to 10 people about interest rates or 10 people about what's going on in the real estate market. Or I want to tell 10 people what my favorite color is this week. I don't care what it is, right? If you post to your, your friends on Facebook and you say, who can help me do this? This is my goal for the week. Oh my goodness, people come to you, right? I mean, that's that's been your kind of experience in a lot of that stuff, Diane. As people kind of come to your aid, they rally behind you and some of that stuff. The yep. other thing I want to remind people is that a great way we're talking to get belly, we're talking about getting belly to belly with people. And I'll, I'll talk about this on Wednesday at the sales meeting too. But um, you know, right now with everybody on social media all the time, just so much more than usual, what a great time to join some Facebook groups. I mean, really, what a great time to pick some topics that you're interested in, 
jump in, include yourself in, in, and be able to have those opportunities where like Andrea was talking about earlier, where you can have these organic conversations where you bring up real estate, right? If you go somewhere that talks about, you know, you want to get into beekeeping, or maybe you don't really want to get into beekeeping, but you're really interested in bees and you'd like to hear about it and, and join a group, right? Or whatever it is for you. But if you join some groups of different topics, you're going to have opportunities to bring up conversations and organically mention that you're in real estate without it being salesy or anything else, right? Oh yeah. The house that I sold two weeks ago or two years ago had this crazy, you know, bee situation where the guy did lots of Mason bees and that, 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 that. I never really knew what that was done. That's all you have to say. Now everybody knows you're, that you do real estate, right? Does that open that conversation? Does it open the door to people ask you about the real estate market? Sure. Does it open the door for you to continue to kind of periodically be genuinely talking? And like Andrea said, genuinely being social, but having the opportunity to have these conversations and interactions. I think Facebook groups right now are a great place to go, especially if you can find things that are hyper local to where you want to be, right? West Seattle beekeepers, right? Or, you know, whatever it is that you're interested in. So anyway, just some ideas of ways that you can go belly to belly. How do, so I'm going to ask a silly question. How do you find these groups? How do you find a group? You just type in on something you're interested in or? Yeah, you know, I, I think you could probably search it on Facebook itself. I know you could also even just Google group, you know, what Facebook groups are, are in places. Also, if you can find, uh, I, I'm not a Facebook, oh my goodness, any of you that know me know that I'm not great at Facebook. Son, Sonia, what do you, you know? You know how yeah. to do this. Yeah, so on Facebook, if you like on the search bar, you type whatever you're interested in. Supposedly, you're interested in gardening. So you put gardening there and then they give you options like topics or places or people. They give you different options or locations. So you can pull up location wise or probably the people that you know or probably by the, the topics, different kind of topics. So it gives you options to, you know, pick which one you want to go with. So it will, when you click on one, it will give you a drop down of like different groups that they have. So some of them will be the closed group. So you have to ask them for the permission to join the group or the other ones will be an open group. So you randomly just join them and you know, you can start posting and then people interact with you. Is it, is you can it also, oh, I'm sorry, Jay. I was just going to say, you can also specifically search like Normandy Park Gardening or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that will give you something more specific. Like I have an Ording Valley Gardeners group that I'm in and I've given people like I have a huge yard. So I've like posted on there. Does anyone want these blueberry bushes that I'm going to throw away? I, I think what I have heard, and again, I, my knowledge is limited, but what I've heard too is, is that sometimes you kind of get into these bigger groups that you don't have, you know, that's just, that are open and you start to make connections in there. And then those people have smaller, more, more, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, just groups uh, with, with fewer people that are maybe more interactive or, or that really give you an opportunity to kind of bond in a different way. So like, Hey, if you, if you, you know, join a group that's, you know, got a thousand people in it, are you really going to have meaningful conversation with a thousand people? Of course not. But as you start to build those relationships and you start to get kind of uh, added in, <laughs> Andrea's going to be like, yeah, you can, you can totally have a very uh, My first lead was in a group of 22,000 people. And I posted, it was a manifestation group and I posted about passing my real estate test on the day I passed it and got a lead off of that. She commented that she was in Washington state and I said, Hey, I just started my Instagram, but I haven't even like signed on with a firm yet, but you can follow my Instagram and I'm hopefully listing her house in July. Yeah. Oh, Seriously, what an amazing group too. I would challenge everybody to join some kind of a manifestation group of some sort what an awesome, awesome group to be a part of. Because not only, think about this for a second, just from sales, like let's say you don't care anything about manifestation at all, but let's think about this for a second. If you're joining a manifestation group and you are then trying to manifest you doing more real estate or interacting with more people, whatever it is that you're doing, or maybe it doesn't have anything to do with that. Guess what? Everybody in the group is helping you, is, is actually has an, a, a desire to help you get what it is that you're trying to manifest. Mm -hmm. I mean, immediately now you have people that are trying to help you accomplish the things you want to help or, or that you want to accomplish. And, and a huge group is great. And, you know, small groups are great, whatever. But I mean, talk about awesome opportunities. I'd be, I'd be jumping on that. Also, I think that's awesome. Also, how many people do you think are trying to manifest themselves owning a home? 
Yeah. A you lot. see it all the time on those. A lot. A lot. A lot. Yeah. And husbands. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can help with one. The other, they're on their own. <laughs> also, one more thing, Tay, is um, I was talking to uh, Marissa. I saw her in passing the other day, and she said she's had really good turnouts with uh, like first time home buyer classes or any kind of online class. So if that's something you feel comfortable with, you could maybe make a Facebook event and then set up a Zoom meeting and just say, here's the password to the meeting. If you want to join, something like that could yeah. work if you're comfortable doing that. People slowing down, they're trying to figure out where their lives are going. They have the time to actually think it through and have the conversations with significant others that you don't generally have the time for, so. Right. I've got a really, question really about showings. Can I, am I unmuted? Yeah, yeah, you're good. Uh, does anyone else feel uncomfortable with showings? I tried the thing where you go let one person in and you walk through with her and then you come back the door and have her husband walk through and like that. And it just felt so artificial and so awkward and crazy. And what I wanted to do is just stand at the entry and say, you know, you guys go in for it. Can't do that. Yeah, I know. So one thing I've done, Bruce, that's a good point, Bruce. Um, it is tricky, and depending on the layout of the home, I opened the front door and had the hus uh, one, one of the partners stand outside and literally stand on the front porch while the front door's open. So they can only communicate what we can see. Yeah. Um, and then we would do the same on a lower level, but um, it's, it is tricky. It is, it's, uh, we have do FaceTime, the, the, you know, the wife is walking through the house FaceTime, but it is really, it is awkward to, you know, it is hard, but because we have to have one agent inside at all times. Um, and, and I tell clients, this rule can change it, it you know, the, the orders will change and if, and when that does, we'll know, but for right now, that's how I've been doing it. I don't know why other people have been doing it, but it is. And I've got some clients who don't want to go at all right now if they can't go in that together. Yeah. If it's a vacant house and there's nothing in there they can steal or damage or whatever, uh, uh, why can't I just stand at or inside the front door and say, you guys go ahead and take a peek? And Because yeah. when they're in a room together, then they can interact Absolutely. I'm sure that they would come out well from other open houses I've done everything. They'll come out and have a whole different feeling than if just one goes in at a time. Yeah, no, there, no, there's no question, Bruce. It, you, you've got that. The, the reason that you can't is because you can't, uh, right? Our, our, our rules, our MLS and super rules say specifically that, that, that you cannot allow a client into a house without them being supervised by you. So that you doesn't mean that we couldn't lobby the MLS or NAR to allow us now that we're opening up a little bit to have two people in with each agent provided we can stay six feet apart and everybody wear masks and gloves. Oh, absolutely. And you could, you, I mean, you could check with NAR. I, I haven't heard specifically that they're working on that. I, I would, I would, I would be shocked if they have not been working on something like that. Also, this is probably only going to be the case for just a few more weeks because yeah. as phase two comes and real estate opens up. I, I'm thinking that that might open up open houses or, or more showing situations. Honestly, Bruce, I think that, that you know, for, for me, I've had limited opportunities to show, but I have had to do this a few times since the lockdown, including, I was telling some people before, I'd have five, I had five people yesterday uh, through the same house, a group of five buyers, and we had to go individually one after another. And you know what? We just kind of poked fun at it and just said, hey, yeah. you know, you guys stay there. Do not step foot in this house. I'm telling you right now, because if you do, I'm going to lose my license. So one at a time, you know, so we kind of had some, you know, we, we kind of just made some, you know, jest with it and, and tried to bring some energy that way. So it, I think the more energy that you bring to it, the better off you're going to be. Because if you just go through, and it's just like anything, if you're just monotone and you just slowly and quietly go through the house, oh my goodness, right? It, you're, it's going to be tough. But, you know, the other thing is, is, you know, people want to then jump in the car afterwards all together and talk about it, which is totally against six foot yeah. separation and everything else. But, you know, the, the thing is, is that, you know, you can, you can do whatever you want outside of the house, but inside we, we just have to hold to it. And, and, and honestly too, it really speaks to, us being Berkshire Hathaway, 
and not in not some small rinky dink, you know, a real estate firm or a large firm that just doesn't care and respect other people in their property. And so I think it goes a long ways to continuing the value of our brand that we respect these things and that our clients see that we respect these things and that we follow the rules so that they know that we're going to be doing the same for them throughout, throughout the, the, the transaction. So I think that there's a lot of benefit to making sure that we, we don't slide some of those rules, even, even in a vacant house that would be easy to do. And I imagine it's a comfort level, just like anything else. That was one of the first showings I'd had, um, certainly with more than one person uh, recently, and I just wasn't very comfortable. It just didn't feel right. Yeah. So. No, it doesn't. Yeah, I don't think I don't think anybody would would say it feels right. I think it definitely it's a different it's a whole different different thing. You guys can't hear that, can you? No. Okay. Nope. Uh, the Lahar sirens just went off in ordering. Uh, we have a trial or we have a um, test first Monday of every month and I forgot about it. Oh, it goes off at 12. It startled me, but they're loud because they're right below my house. So making sure they weren't. Nice. Well, that's good. It's 12.04. Well, no. everybody. Yeah, if there's no other question. Whoops, do you have a question, Barb? Sorry. No, I said nice job. Yeah, well, I want to thank Andrea, both Andrea and Lisa for contributing today. It's much appreciated. So we, we definitely learned a lot from both of you. Thank you. Um, thank you, everyone, for showing up to Zoom Room. Uh, appreciate your participation as well. And we'll do it again uh, next week. What, what's next week, Russ? Next week, we're going to talk about data, you know, where to find data to share with your, your clients in the sphere. Cool. Yep. Awesome. Thanks, right on, everybody. Thank you. We don't right. see you right. soon. We'll see you sales meeting on Wednesday. That's what I was going to okay. ask. 11? Thank you. Yeah, 11. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. All right, bye, everybody. Bye-bye.